Hi guys, in this video we'll be discussing the problem distinct values from code shift starter 74. The problem states that the beauty value of an array is defined as the difference between the largest and the second largest elements of the array. Note that the largest and the second largest elements of an array can have the same value in case of duplicates. So for example, if we have an uh, array 767, then over here the largest as well as the second largest value is same. Or in this case where there are uh, the, the largest value is 5 and the la second largest value is 3 so there could be any case but in case of duplicates it is possible that the largest and second largest value is same so this is called the beauty of the array now for a given array we have to consider all the sub arrays and we have to count the distinct beauties right and we have to return the distinct beauties rather so for example over here the distinct duty is only 0 because there is only one sub array of length greater than 1 that is 1 1 itself and their beauty is uh, itself 0, 1 minus 1 is 0. Over here, let us say uh, the array uh, the array provided to us is 4 to 1. So, this would be one array, 4, four 2 would be sub, one sub array. It would have a beauty of 4 minus 2, that is 2. Uh, this also is one sub array, it has a beauty of 2 minus 1, that is, again, uh, that is 1. So, we already have seen two distinct beauties. Now, what about the entire array? So, the entire array has a maximum value of 4 the second largest value is 2 so it also has a, a beauty of 2 so the distinct uh, the all the beauties that we were able to see or the all the beauty values which we were able to see were uh, 2 2 2 and 1 right so since the distinct we only are counting the distinct values so the values are 2 and 1 which give a total number count of 2 right so yeah so similarly we have to calculate the things for in all the arrays also the constraint provided is that n can go up to 2 to uh, 2 into 10 to the power 5 so over here order of n log n or order of n solution would definitely work but we cannot go ahead with the order of n scale solution i hope that is clear so next uh, let's proceed with the question itself so let's try to understand that what we can do over here so if this is my array this is a1 a2 a3 a4, A5, let's call A6 and let's consider a element let's say A3. So standing at A3, there let me see to my left and let me see to my right. So firstly let's say I'm just seeing to my left. Right. To my left I have to see which element comes first that is greater than A3, greater than or equal to A3. So over here we have an element A2. I'll check if A2 is greater than or equal to A3. If it is so, well and good. I already have the element greater than or equal to A3. Uh, if it's not, let's say if it's less than A3, then I have to check mo more left. Then more left and more left. So now I have an element A1. So if A A1 is greater than or equal to A3, well and good. I got my element. If it's not, then I have to move ahead. But there's no element at at uh, like to the left of it. So I'll stop my traversal and I can say that okay, so A3 doesn't have a element greater than or equal to A3 which is to its left. Similarly uh, over here. So now the point is I'll keep traversing till the time I find the element greater than or equal to A3. As soon as I get that, I can return that okay, so this is the closest element to A3 which was greater than or equal to that. So I'll I'll be performing this for for my left and for my right as well. So now why I'm doing this? Because what I'm saying is that I want to consider A3 to be my a3 is my second largest value right of the sub array so now let's say if a3 is my second largest value a3 is over here now let's say i'm talking about the left case so i need some value to its left right a value to its left that is having a value of greater than or equal to greater than or equal to a3 if i get that value then i can say for this particular sub array the uh, the beauty would be ai Let's say AI was the value that was greater than or equal to A3. AI minus A3. So that would give me one of the beauties, right? Similarly, I'll be performing the same operation for all the elements. And I can get the entire beauty of the array or the beauty of different sub arrays. I hope that made sense. Now, what if uh, there is a possibility that AI was over here? That's fine. A3 was over here. There could be some elements over here as well, right? There could be some elements over here as well. What about these? So since I am performing uh, this operation for all the elements, this shouldn't matter. Now what could be a case is that uh, this had a other value. Let's say it had a value of 1. Let's say. Cool. So even if we consider this particular subarray. 
so the uh, so the beauty would remain unchanged because we are just supposed to select the maximum and the second maximum value since this is the maximum a3 is the uh, second maximum so this would, wouldn't matter but in case this value was greater then it would have already made a sub, sub array uh, on on itself uh, early, uh, on its own turn so all the cases would be covered cool so firstly i'll be checking firstly i'll be checking to its left then to its right so that's how i'm, how I'm going to proceed what after that so basically nothing after that once i'm done with this i can simply return my answer but the problem is that if for every element if i'm supposed to check all the elements to its left then to all the elements to its right it's going to take a order of n square complexity that is going to give me a tle so what can i do i can actually use a monotone stack monotone stack now what is a monotone stack i hope uh, most of you know it but for those who don't monotone stack is basically data structure which uh, save the value in a either a ascending or a st a st ascending or a descending fashion so what i mean by that let's say this is my stack a1 a2 a3 a4 i at least hope everyone knows what a stack is so this is an example of monotone stack if all the elements are in a certain order or let's say all the elements in are another certain order so these are valid ex examples over here i'll just use the equality operator as well so these are valid monotone stacks but this is not a valid monotone stack i hope this is making sense right so monotone stack basically means a certain uh, order needs to be followed cool now why is this useful for me because what i can say is i can maintain a monotone stack or let's say a decreasing monotone stack monotone stack right so let's say this is my monotone stack a1 a2 a3 and i come so i'm going from left to right left to right now i come to a particular element ai where i where i do have a stack that is this now i can check if the top of my stack is greater than ai then i can say okay i have a element to my left that has a value greater than a of i if it's not greater than ai then i can keep popping it i'll keep popping it now since it's a uh, decreasing monotone stack so my a3 is actually less than a2 is less than a1 right so probably i should get a element which is greater than ai if i don't get an element then i can conclude that there was no element to my uh, to my left which has a, had a value greater than ai and at the end once i'll be done by this popping uh, I, there would be two cases so one case would be that my stack would be empty in case i had uh, didn't find any element that was greater than or equal to ai my stack would become empty i would pop up all the element in that search or in second case the top of the stack would be okay would be greater than or equal to my element in either case in either of these cases i'll push the current element right so this is how i'll be able to find the elements that are to the my left and have a value of a value greater than the current element now what about the elements to my right i'll perform the same operation for them as well and i can get that and at each iteration when i get the element that is to my left which is greater than me or to my right that is greater than me i'll just save the value of the differences so let's say uh, i was able to get a element that's greater than me to my left right so to my left let's say the element was a of l the current element is a of i right so i'll save their difference in a set now the reason i'm using a set over here is that it's easier to store distinct values and when i have to return the number of distinct values available i can simply print print the size of the set itself similarly i'll be doing for uh, the right itself uh, right also so ai and ar would be the two elements so this storing these also in the set cool uh, that was easy let's look at the code also okay so over here i'm firstly taking the integer n then the vector then i'm using the stack initially it's empty i'm calling the stack st i'm calling the set uh, d it basically means differences cool so then i'm performing the operation like i told so i'm checking if my stack is non empty and if the top of the stack is greater than or equal to v of i v of i is basically a current element if it's greater than or equal to then good enough i already found a element to my left that has a value greater than or equal to the current well uh, current element in that case i'll uh, insert the insert the difference into my into my uh, set and i'll break i'll get out of this loop it's if that's not the case then i'll keep popping the elements cool there's some uh, like 
comments I wrote just to explain you the stuff. Let's delete that. Uh, after that, once I'm done with this loop, like I told, uh, there are only two cases: either the stack would be empty, or the top of the stack would actually be a element that is greater than or equal to me. And since I'm maintaining a decreasing bound on stack, I'll push the current element on top of it. Now I have to check from right to left. Now I, I could have like written the entire logic and stuff, but what I found to be easier to do is that I'll just reverse the array. I'll clear my stack, and then I'll perform the same operation. So since I've reversed my array. So my left to right would technically become the right to left. I'm performing the exact same same thing. I just copied it, uh, copied this particular code, this particular code from here to here. Cool. So after that, when I'm done with that, I'll just print the size of my set. So that's it. This was a simple question. I'll say it's it's a pretty known known thing. So when you want to check the value that is just uh, like greater than you present to the uh, I'm present the nearest to you. Or a value that is just great, uh, greater than you and present to the left or to the right of you. It's a pre pretty no known thing. Just had to get a bit of intuition so as to apply the same logic over here. Yeah, that's it for the video. If you have any doubts, let me know in the comment section below. Always more than happy to help you out. Cool guys, thanks a lot. Bye bye.